Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're going to be looking at an Arceus uh, Mustard deck that is relying on the Single Strike Beedrill, allowing us to get some big uptrades as a one prize Pokemon on Pokemon that have special energy attached. And as we know, special energy is very popular right now in the format. Arceus players are using double turbo energy, Mew players are using fusion strike energy and double turbo energy. Uh, so that's going to be a couple big uh, ticks in favor of Beedrill, and it does make it a very potent one prize attacking threat. It also has Jet Spear that can do 110 for just one grass. You'd have to discard, which is a little bit annoying here and there, um, but it's a decent number to get through many, you know, other one prize Pokemon like Sobble and Bidoof in the opening turns, which I think is very good. Also, um, Whimsicott, I should say, has a ton of special energy in there as well, very reliant on double turbo itself. So we are trying to use that Mustard supporter to cheat Beedrill into play. In order to play Mustard, we need to get to this card being the only card remaining in our hand, and then you can search the deck for Beedrill and put it directly into play, so ignoring the fact that it's a stage two, and then you get to draw five cards, which is no bad thing. Um, and we try and get this done in a few different sneaky ways, really. We play four quick and four ultra to hopefully thin our hand size down. We have a couple of poker gears in here to help cherry pick mustard at the right time, but it's also a decent card throughout the mid game to get other supporters like bosses orders um, and maintain us drawing cards throughout the game. We also have a couple copies of Mew with that mysterious tail, allowing us to look at the top six and grab an item card. So we're hoping to hit uh, these quick and ultra balls most of the time. We can also use Primate Wisdom to try and change a card in our uh, hand with a card on top of our deck. That could be helpful for putting Beedrills that we draw back into the deck so they can be live targets for Mustard. Or just cards that are not playables, like secondary supporters that happen to make it into your hand that are maybe blocking your Mustard play. You can uh, go for Broke and try and Wisdom into a different card that is either an Insta-playable, uh, like a ton of basic Pokemon or uh, like tool cards or anything, or it's one of these... Uh, more helpful, like, quicker Ultra Balls, really. That's the whole idea here. So Beedrill is the workaround. We really have to jump through hoops. And, of course, things get very simple when uh, you can use your Ball Search to get Luminion, for example. You can get Crobat to go back up in cards to hopefully go further down. Uh, but you also have Starbirth, of course. Starbirth can easily make uh, the mustard happen. Um, if anyone played Archie's Toys back in the day, one comp search almost always got you there. And the fact that you can starbuff for two of any card you want means that there's basically going to be no hand that you can be represented where you can't mustard if you want to uh, via starbuff. So at the very least, a turn two Beedrill is open as long as you go for that starbuff play. Uh, you'd have to be very unfortunate to not get that off. So... Yeah, uh, that's one of the main build arounds, and I've mentioned why Beedrill is so strong. Arceus V-Star is, is still a decent attacking threat, of course, that Trinity Nova helping us power up back, uh, backup attackers at the same time, which I think is very relevant. Uh, so certainly a decent card here. The things we are going to be powering up is a Sylveon VMAX package, as well as a Flygon and a Zapdos V. These are our main sort of attackers in the deck. Uh, so the Sylveon VMAX is a 2-1 line here, as well as Ordinary Rod. It's going to try and help us hit for weakness into Urshifu and really put that card in check. Max Harmony can do a ton of good damage output, uh, just in general, as a backup attacking threat that also can take advantage of Double Turbo, for example. Uh, so you can potentially Raihan attach and get this all going in one turn. Doesn't need the Trinity Nova to help you get there. Um, but with weakness, that 70 plus 30 for each different type of bench Pokemon, we play a lot of different types in the deck naturally, and you can freely bench stuff uh, in that regard. Uh, we're hoping to keep Rapid Strike Urshifu in check. The list I posted on Top Tier Tweaks uh, just yesterday was also playing a Manaphy. I've since taken out uh, in favor of Flygon to help out with uh, the Mew match up that little bit more, and I've also added the Gears to also help with the Mew match up that little bit more, because I do think it's a sus match up without the Flygon, but I think with Flygon, you represent a good number of threats um, that you're basically always representing knockouts on Mews. If you're able to Nova or charge into a Flygon, whilst also having a Mustarded Beedrill like, on the bench, even if Beedrill isn't live at the time, um, it gives your opponent that awkward situation where if they are going to go for like a boss KO with a Mew VMAX on a Flygon, there's still a Beedrill that can come in and respond. So you're hoping to weave in two and one prizes against the Mew matchup, and Flygon really helps that. Flygon also can one-hit KO um, good old 
Urshifu as well. So this is also somewhat of a backup in case you prize your Sylveon VMAX. You can go for a Trinity Nova all onto Flygon and you can get up to 320 and we are playing Zig and we are playing Double Choice Belt. So Flygon is also going to help us out with prizing situations and is also just very good against uh, Mew, I think, just as a threat in play a lot of the time. We have a couple soft answers for the Arceus Mirror. We're not playing Sharon's Care, which is a little bit awkward. So we're looking to get our prizes aggressively. That's why you do see Zigzagoon plus Belts. So you can have some boss plays turn two for Trinity Nova KOs for the full 220. Uh, we also are playing Beedrill, which can KO usually their first Arceus, which almost always requires double turbo to help power up the initial Trinity Nova. Uh, so that's normally an easy two prizes here or there. Zapdos is in here to maybe have some surprise factor or just force awkward board states out of the opponent and make them have things like Dunsparce in play proactively. If not, you can get an easy kick on them uh, with the Zapdos. So it's a little extra threat in here uh, that I do like having the option of because sometimes the opponent uh, won't be playing around it in spots, especially when we are playing an Avery of our own, which can make their board state even more awkward at times. So yeah, I think the Zapdos is like a little bit of extra help, but certainly you can just try and play smart with your Beedrills and Arceus in that mirror match situation uh, to be good enough without hitting for any like particular high number into V-style Pokemon. But yeah, the rest of the Pokemon are just sort of engine style, the Crobat, the Luminion helping us get there, the Mew and the Guru, similar deal here. We have as many Insta plays as possible, like the Bull Search, the Gear, uh, Ordinary Rod is... Not the best insta play, obviously, uh, but it can give you some protection if you happen to have some of these in your opening hand. We have a thin Arceus line as well, so some protection around prizing, for example, uh, is not a bad thing here at all. And it can help reload energy to give you extra value from multiple Trinity Novas in a game, which I think is very helpful, especially for things like Flygon, which discards a ton from itself as well. There can be situations where your opponent um, like gusts around a Flygon after it gets its attack off, and uh, that can leave your board pretty depleted. So having things like Ornery Rod to reload energies uh, is never a bad thing to make sure that you can carry on, as with the training courts. The main reason why we play courts is because you go down to a zero card hand pre-mustered, but there's no guarantee that you'll get into grass energy. So if you're able to use things like E-Search and Bull Search to get rid of grass before the mustard, uh, you can draw the training court for additional outs to make sure that you can get that uh, persist sting off when you need to. So a very big support uh, stadium card here, which obviously enables the star birth and the ban the Luminion as well. So you need some path bouncing. So yeah, pretty interesting combo deck. We are trying to throw a ton of attackers all into one list at once. So there's a bit to juggle here, but at its core... We have a potentially dangerous one prize attacking threat and uh, still some good type coverage at our disposal. So that's what we're going for here with Arceus Mustard. Uh, I do think it's pretty interesting and um, is obviously less conventional than like an Inteleon engine, um, but there are big upsides to it as well. We're actually up against uh, Evenoff for our game, uh, so stay tuned for it. But if you want to go ahead and get your own PTCGO codes, make sure you go ahead and check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code Omnipoke. Let's get into uh, our first turn. We have won the coin flip, which is obviously very good. I can lead out an Arceus, but I want to attach to it, really. So I might lead out the Sylveon instead uh, and just end my turn on a Dream Gift. There's potential... Yeah, the hand is very good, actually. Let's uh, just do this. Let's see what we got. Looks like it's Mew. So Mew is one of our sort of sketchier matchups, I guess you could say. Um, do I want to get rid of boss's orders in this hand so that I have a play for next turn? You definitely want to Mustard pretty aggressively in this matchup. I'm definitely going to do this. I definitely want to bench a Pokemon to play around Escape Rope nicely. Um, but do I want to get rid of a Boss's Orders? I could see myself using a Boss's Orders on turn two uh, rather than a Mustard. Let's check some stuff in the deck. So we do have our Flygon. We've prized a Beedrill, but that's okay. We have both V-Stars. Uh, we do have Luminion. Mm hmm hmm <laughs> Uh, I think we're grabbing just a pivot here to have throughout the game. Because if ever we find a balloon, it's going to be helpful. So we have two mustards in the deck. Okay. One boss prize as well. Actually pretty important to check your prizes in this deck. Was it a boss prize or is it just in hand? 
Yeah, I think it's one prized. Let's draw some cards. It's a bit risky putting multiple two prized Pokemon down. Um, I could just Dream Gift as well, honestly. Uh, Dream Gift can get me into... A, well, okay, let's, let's just bat for four here first. See what we're working with. So this does give me a Balloon and an Ultra Ball now, which is actually crazy. I'm going to try, before committing this Ultra Ball, to use a Mysterious Tail here. We do get a free discard. I think I'm just going to discard a E-Search straight up with the Ultra Ball. Uh, yep. Get rid of Grass Energy and E-Search. Let's get a second one of these down, I think. Uh, or do I want Wisdom? Wisdom not bad as well. I can Wisdom the boss and then Dream Gift so I have a different top deck, which is kind of cool. Okay, nice. So we've got the double one prize down, which I think is really big. Um, we already have Starbirth. So I think I just want to take the... That's a bad idea. Um... We'll just take Ultra to hand, I think. Yep, seems fine. Means if they do take a KO, I could potentially uh, get the mustard off um, without having to starbirth, which would be a big deal because we've actually prized a balloon, uh, so I'd have to starbirth for rope if I wanted to. Uh, but getting two one prizes out is really good. I'm very well set for a mustard play next turn. We'll see what he can come up with here. It's either Remu Slow Start or such a good hand they don't know what to discard with Ball Search. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's the latter. <clears throat> oh, I lied. It's a bad hand. Right, so when it's a bad hand, you're going to have everything your way. Let's start with a Tail... Uh, we definitely have the rope in deck because we already scouted it. So let's just go ahead and grab that rope. Uh, can I also mustard this turn? Yes, I can. So rope must mustard is going to be pretty insane. Do it like this. I don't need any more of these, right? I don't need any more of these either. I'll make the Sylveon, I think. Uh, let's protect Raihan, I guess. And we can swing. So obviously it was a very slow Mew start. Like, there's no doubt that this is going to hurt them. <laughs> but uh, if they were only able to take a one prize KO that turn with like a Meloetta, for example, um, we could, still could have done the Nova develop B drill. I think the only difference would be I'd have to get a Flygon down on this board as well for additional pressure. I think that's the only thing that I would have done differently here. 
but we'll see if there can be any comeback. It's not out of the realms of possibility that they could still beat us, because Mew is crazy. My watch is somewhere in this room. I don't know where, but it's going off. All right, looks like it's a big cram flip. <laughs> the VIP top deck just to add salt to the wound and then the tails, crazy. We will see the sparkle, just for one. <clears throat> we'll see the system. All right, at least they're drawing a couple cards here. Ordinary Rod in Mew. Crazy. Very strange. Okay, well that's a win against Mew. We had a really good turn one. The Crobat was very good. It developed us the double one prize active board state, which is really the dream against Mew. It's the best thing possible. And then we had a crazy mustard rope, right? That was just busted. But yeah, against a Mew that draws better, it's actually still a losable position from that spot. It just means that we weren't able to wisdom any cards. We would have had to kept that space open for Flygon. Let's get another game in quickly though. Let's go first again, love to see it. Okay, slightly more awkward hand. Double Mustard and Beedrill all finding their way to our hand is obviously not great. It's hands like this where you think dream gifts really are gifts. Uh, I think I like Double Turbo Active. I see Manaphy, so I don't think it's like a Whimsicott deck, and that's really the only Hammer deck, right? Uh, I don't think I'm going to Crowbat for one here. What can I do next turn? I could Ultra Ball next turn, get rid of this, this, grab Guru, Guru this, play the Balloon, Bench Bat, don't draw. So as long as my Guru is Insta Play, it's fine. Get rid of this, this. Yeah, it's still possible. Like, as bad as the turn is, it's it's still in our range to must it if we really have to. Our VMAX is here. We've prized a mustard. So we're probably limited to this one B drill this game. If I have to ultra ball the second one away. Uh, all right, but the Ultra Ball is certainly the best card here because at the very least it unlocks Crobat if we don't want to go for a Mustard play next turn. It unlocks Dark Asset for us to draw some cards at least. And gets us to Sylveon VMAX, which could ease, like we could easily be up against Urshifu here, right? You see Manaphy level ball, it's certainly an Inteleon engine. It's either Arceus or Urshi probably. Yep. Okay, so it's Arceus. Path does make the hand much worse, but actually the Marnie's going to help us here. Even though we're losing Ultra Ball, the hand wasn't like that strong. Hand is still not that strong, incidentally. Capture out an Arceus. So their attachment isn't to Arceus, at least. Arceus. Are they debating a scoop up net here? Yeah, so they can keep calling, which is nice.
So I could um Ultra Ball for V Max here and bench guru and attach double turbo and hit for sixty. Uh I guess I have to. You gotta keep up with the pressure, I think. The the tempo. It does feel bad, but I don't know what else I'm doing. It's an outside the box play. <laughs> That's, uh, we basically have three draws to get out of this, right? Oh my goodness. Show me an insta play, please. Okay, our opponent's hand is bad. They've weaved a Melanie in, but they've spent their turn attachments, so yeah. Oh my goodness. And everything is 60 hit points. <laughs> is that the best draw in the deck? Yes, it is. Okay. What is happening? What the... That is crazy. <laughs> Okay, everyone calm down. Yeah, this is very nice. Um, with no attachment available, unfortunately. But let's get our hit in. Busted top deck. And now, like, they could potentially do, like, another Melanie attach play, I guess, and have all basics. Just to trade each other. So they've just bricked. They've just bricked very badly. I, I kind of need the card draw. But taking prizes is also card draw. <laughs> okay, that's kind of meme but I'll allow it. Should I just pressurize active? I probably should, right? We can go... 7, 10, 13, 16, down to 120. 120 is p technically pressure if I attach to Arceus, right? Yeah, it is. Maybe I was meant to just take the... Uh, take the Avery, draw three there. Kind of greedy. I was definitely thinking of taking the prize, but why am I not just pressurizing this guy while he while he bricks? He has so many top decks. That's actually like a super low roll. Like think about how many top decks they actually have there to get themselves into a hand. Especially because they thin so many energy out of their deck with Nova. So we've beaten a bricking Mew and a bricking Arceus. This deck punishes bricks apparently. Uh, that was such a wacky uh, hand. The mustard prize into the rope top deck. That is blessed right there. Did the most out of a pretty awkward position, <laughs> I'll say. But the deck does play naturally a lot of insta-play cards, in fairness. And we had the wisdom to try and help us out, also. Uh, we have a mulligan, which I'm thankful for, because you never want both beedrills in hand. That is a disgrace. Uh, 
Uh, we've led our Sylveon every time. We are going second here, so there's potential to attempt turn one mustard. I don't need trying to go mustard if they actually attach double turbo turn one or capture or whatever. Otherwise, you just don't go for it. We would try and weave it in turn two instead. They practically grabbed V Star. It's a mirror match, but they play Palpad. Interesting. They didn't attach turn one. Okay. Let's get rid of this stuff. We have prized A B drill. We do have our Sylve. We have our Zig. Have our rope. Have our right hand, okay. Playing the training court first actually makes it harder for them to mustard us. Uh, so because we know it's mirror, I'm probably just attaching fighting energy this turn. And I guess I just gift in the active. Yeah, I guess we just gift. Seems fine. They're playing an Inteleon engine though, so I guess it's not a complete mirror. I don't want a mustard unless he's Trinity Nova Ring. Trinity Charging. I think I just gift. I don't draw the cards. I think it could hurt my options if I just drew the cards. So let's gift. Doesn't really make sense to, to bench and retreat into a Mew here because I just have to spend another card um, to retreat it. We are playing like a thin Mew package, just the two balloon and the, and the one rope, so. We are going to see Starbirth. I wonder what they're going to go for here. There's not too much I'm super afraid of. Maybe they try and get a mustard play down this turn to like threaten my Arceus. I'm gonna discard water, Melanie, okay. So they're gonna just Nova KO. It's not a KO, it's Kinda wonky. Uh, so grass energy is a fantastic draw. Bench, Ultra Ball V, Star Buff, a second Ultra Ball, Mustard KO. Sounds good. Uh, oops. Quick Ultra makes the most sense, right? Means I have to put a fish down, which I don't like. Do I just go benching a second Mew here instead? Is there any smarter way I can do this? Not really. So let's bench the second Mew, I guess. 
rather than benching uh, Luminion. Uh, I can't take a Pokemon here because I need it to be Beedrill Space. But do I want to evolve this to stay out of quick shooting range? Slash Raihan Aqua Bullet range. Gives him a fairly easy 3 2 1 prize map, so I don't think we're doing it. Let's take our grass energy. It's one of the messier mustards, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it's a mustard all the same. Our hand is pantaloons. We're really hoping that a mysterious tail can help us next turn. I'm going to see a Dunsparce. I'm going to see an Ornery Rod. Getting back their own Beedrill and a V-Star. And then it's going to rip research. They choose not to bench another Arceus, which is interesting. So they are going to get quick shooting down, so they can get two prizes here. It's not necessarily the worst news for us, because we need board space right now. I know they're going to also knock out the active, but... We need something to power up with this Arceus if we actually get to it. I choose to attach another special energy and I really don't think that's the right play. It's going to make life pretty easy for us to take another two prizes here at some point. It might make them boss more Beedrills as well, which is pretty good. Anyway, it does come down to this Mysterious Tail quite a bit, though. Do you hit gear? So I could either gear or I could Luminion here. Luminion for Raihan. Raihan come in and hit benching an Arceus. Probably our best move. It does put down another, so he has two easy gust prizes. So I go hit, he goes boss hit. So he can go run a run a boss hit to beat me, I guess. He has got rid of power pad and boss though. So he may not have the option to boss boss. I think if he's playing pad, he'd only play two boss, right? So I think it's actually fine. I think it's actually fine. Let's get rid of this. So this plays around his Beedrill, which feels important to me. have enough energy for that. I should probably get a supporter for next turn rather than just this guy. Um, they could easily Sharon's. If they go Sharon's, they go here. Re-bench. They could also re-big charm the bench, which is really awkward. I think I need to have research in hand though. Uh, sorry, boss in hand. Okay.
We are making, we are put into a couple of awkward positions here. Our opponent is cleverly being cautious of potential zap boots. As soon as they see fighting energy, I guess they kind of have to. But we've played around them mustarding us this turn at least. So they could easily Sharon's care. They're going to grab incense, so they're going to go big deal instead of quick shoots. Okay. Do you think they'd play Sharon's Care in a deck that plays Mustard? Maybe one, right? Maybe one. Rihan Belt. Well, Rihan's not a playable. Okay, so they have the Sharon. Right hand belt is a really curious couple of cards. Yeah, they big charm the right target as well. Yeah, this is gonna be tricky. Why do they get belt? I don't know what that achieves. Uh, so we're going to try and do a trapping play, I guess, here. If ever they play double Sharon's, we lose the game anyway. But I think this is the best way to try and get a turn out of him. They could always DT retreat, I guess. But we're in kind of panicky stations. I don't know what other players I have open to me here. They are two DTs down, and they may only play three, so might be a sneaky line that helps us. The best thing about it is that it keeps the double turbo over here for a potential B drill. Alright, we're going to see quick shooting. Target active. Does the sneaky gust do it? They're attaching to the intel. Oh boy, the sneaky gust, huh? Ignore the fact that our hand is just clogged full of moms. Uh, yeah, let's... We'll take the free turn. You can't, can't really say no to it. I wasn't allowed to retreat here because I didn't have a V-star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Despite getting that free turn, we're actually still behind. We kind of need a Marnie to like declog the hand. But if they're gonna attack with Intel anyway this turn, yeah, it's kind of moot. Ah, Zigping boss double KO game. Yeah, looks like they're just here this turn. GG. 
the uh, the quick shooting was really important for them that game. I think it's just that we it was too much work for us to get that mustard off. We like filled our bench too aggressively, I guess. We'll try and get one more quick game in. Hopefully it's a quick game. But yeah, I do think you're vulnerable in Arc Mirror. I think that's like uh, an upside to playing Urshifu over Sylveon is that you make the board even more awkward for Urshi. Uh, uh, sorry, for, for uh, Arceus. So there's benefits and weaknesses to playing the Sylveon. We are going second. The hand isn't inducive of a mustard just yet. We need like one ball search to unlock the door. I'm always thinking about mustard, even though it's not like always the optimal play. You gotta like bear it in mind as a potential turn one play. Piers and Urshifu. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, so yeah, this is really not happening. Uh, this is a terrible hand. I said it was going to be a quick game. I didn't mean for this reason. Force the extra attachment, I guess. Rather than just a Gale Thrust switch play. But if he V-stars anyway, he just has what he wants. Ugh. And he could 100 Furious Blows, it's actually way worse for me. Yeah, let's just... Ooh! So it's at this point where you just scoop up your cards. Hate to see it. They have limitless potential here. <laughs> if they Rapid Flow, it's insane for them. If they just hit, it's insane for them. They play two peers, what is going on? Two. What happened to one ofs? I imagine they're playing Sylveon Box, which is why they're playing Piers. To get like Crobat VMAX established. All right, so at least as the Furious Blow is ready to rumble. They can bat up for some cards. Three Arceus, so maybe it's not Sylveon. Oh, it's Arc Mali with an Urshi package. Uh, wow. This game has got wild, huh? <coughs> it's a shame we're not able to show off the Sylveon part of this deck to check the Urshi, but uh, here we are. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Let's uh, end it there, I guess. <laughs> I said I was going to get one more quick game. Uh, so really, we we overcame a couple of like awkward draws for the Mew and for the for an Arceus, right? And then we lost a longer game against an Arc Intel. Uh, played Beedrill also, so it made us sort of tread carefully, which is interesting. I do think if you want to try cutting Zapdos and going back to an Urshi package, it's completely fine. In that instance, you certainly have to play Manaphy. Uh, you keep the rod to try and reload that Manaphy as well. So it's one of those things. If you want the Sylveon to help with the Urshi, or you want the Urshi to help with the Arc Mirror, it's, it's one of those things that you have to balance out. Obviously, the Zapdos didn't pull its weight in those Arc matches because... People have to expect it, right? Dunsmars comes down in too many occasions, so let me know your thoughts on Arceus Beedrill. Where do you think it sits in the meta? Uh, what do you think about the Sylveon package versus an Urshifu package? Is there just too much Manaphy dunce right now for uh, Urshi to thrive in this sort of list as like a mini package? Do you need to just play, you know, like double Avery to try and make it work? Who knows? 
I'll hear your thoughts down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.